What's going on with the truckers? You know, California on the I-10 in Los Angeles has been a cluster, right? And so uh, Gavin Newsom, your guys' governor, actually has some decent news. He said that it was going to take three to five weeks for the highway to open back up, and it has been horrible with traffic. Now, here's the thing. Over 300,000 vehicles travel on that highway, on that piece of the highway, every single day. So here's the good news for truck drivers. It looks like by the latest, this upcoming Tuesday, five lanes on both directions should be back open. So you should be good to go. Buddy, um, thanks for your patience. And uh, it's good to be back uh, here with all of you and uh, here with good news. Um, our timeline has changed. Um, with the extraordinary work of the men and women you see behind me, the carpenters, the laborers, teamsters, the cement masons, 30 new carpenters on site in the last 24 hours with the outstanding work of Griffith and security paving and their teams. They got ahead two days on the debris removal, allowed them to move more quickly uh, to retrofit uh, the structure you see behind me. And as a consequence, uh, one thing we can guarantee you is we will be open five lanes in both directions at the latest Tuesday of next week. So that is a significant improvement on the basis of our uh, original timeline, three to five weeks. Uh, and we're going to do everything in our power to see if we can move that closer. But that we don't want to overpromise. But by Tuesday next week, trucks, passenger vehicles in both directions. Uh, will be moving again. And that simply is due to the extraordinary work, again, of the folks you see behind me. Um, we've doubled what we've doubled. <laughs> we've doubled the crews. We've doubled down uh, on uh, our uh, efforts here. The materials and supplies um, have um, presented themselves without any uh, hindrances or any uh, problems. Uh, things continue to move favorably in our direction. That is not guaranteed. We still have chemical sampling that comes in on a daily basis, uh, but the bridge structure itself uh, seems to be in better shape than we anticipated. And that, and I'll close, turn it over to the mayor, specifically allowed us to uh, provide for what we refer to as vents. Half of the vents were required, quite literally half, about 14 versus uh, 28. And as a consequence of that, it's not just the time uh, to build those structures, but it's the opportunity and the flexibility that provides to do some jacking work. We've got these 100-ton jacks that are coming in. We had six. We're going to go to 36 of these jacks that are going to come in and shore up these columns. So, again, it's the flexibility, not just the time related to the bents uh, that turned out to, again, be in our favor, primarily because of some of the good sampling work that came back on the bridge structure itself. And I just want to, again, cannot impress upon you more, thank the two emergency contractors. We decided to stick with them. They've just hit the ground running, uh, and they're proving themselves to be at the next level. They were pre-approved emergency contractors for a reason, and they are performing. So once again, to Griffin and uh, Security Paving and their teams, all union contractors, hardworking men and women, I'll say it again, thank you, Doug McCarran and the Carpenters, another yeah. 30 folks that just came in. But as I said, the laborers down here um, and the Teamsters and Cement Masons have just exceeded all of our expectation to you and your team. Thank you. uh, we are grateful to Caltrans, Tokes, to Tony uh, and the team. They've taken this seriously. Everybody's moved down here, moving, as we said, day one, heaven and earth. And I'll just close by thanking again our federal partners, just left the president. Um, and uh, as you know well, he's in California. And uh, it's all of government, whatever you need, approach the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, and Mitch Landrum, now not just uh, Secretary Buttigieg, everybody, all hands. And, of course, talk about hands. You got one of the most hands-on mayors in the United States of America uh, that's proving uh, that she can meet any moment. And we couldn't be more proud of Mayor Bass and how she's been uh, so direct and honest and communicative um, and uh, and. Uh, has been able to organize a whole of government approach to trying to mitigate to the best extent possible uh, the impacts of uh, this very difficult uh, circumstance and situation here on the I-10. With that, your mayor, Karen Bass.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, this is a good day in Los Angeles. And let me just say, to quote one of the Caltrans engineers, all of the stars have been aligned, been aligned on behalf of Angelinos. Let me first and foremost thank Angelinos for paying attention to what we were saying, staying informed, using public transportation, telecommuting if you can, and staying on the freeways and off the surface streets, and staying peaceful. The last few days have been difficult, but everybody has cooperated, and I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, let me just say, it's because of leadership and leadership coming together. The governor, just think for a minute, he has come back and forth to L.A. while participating in one of the most significant international conferences that we've seen in our country. Managing the world, but being here for Angelinos. It's the kind of leadership that we have needed in this state to make sure that those stars are aligned. And then our federal partners, from the White House with Secretary Buttigieg calling right away. The Vice President, I spoke to Vice President Harris last night. They made sure that we had the resources, delivering several million dollars just yesterday to Caltrans and saying that everybody understands the significance of these highways in this city. So what a gift for Los Angeles to have right before a holiday to know that your commute will be better. I also want to thank the workforce, all of the folks that have been here from the carpenters to the teamsters to the laborers, security paving, Griffin, their experience from 1994 being there when they, then when, when we needed them. Everybody has been point understanding the significance of this. And again, I want to thank the governor. I know he left the conference to come here and will be going right back, but really appreciate his leadership and the leadership of Caltrans and our Secretary of Transportation and everybody that locked arms, as we say in Los Angeles, and get and are getting the job done. Thank you. Mayor, where do we stand on the arson investigation? One quick second, if we can just uh, finish up with Caltrans. And we'll talk about that. Hi, good evening. I'm Gloria Roberts, District 7 Director for Caltrans. I would like to start off by echoing the governor and the mayor's sentiments for the great thanks and appreciation that we have for Griffith Company and Security Paving and all their laborers who have been working around the clock to make this happen. Secondly, I want to thank Angelinos for their patience. Um, just a few more days of following the detour, so we continue to urge that everybody exercise patience and caution as we follow, continue to follow the detours. But lastly, my heartfelt thanks goes to Caltrans District 7 and the Caltrans team from headquarters who have been here every single day, responsive on site to anything that was needed to, so that we can reopen the roadway as soon as safely possible. But we can't do this without the wonderful leadership of our governor who exemplifies what it is that we can do when we have cross-governmental collaboration at all levels. And I, we thank you, Mayor Bass, and I thank everybody for their patience and for all the workers and for our wonderful Caltrans team. We are so proud to bleed orange. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now we will be sharing this information in Spanish. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Eric Menibar, soy vocero para Caltrans Distrito Número 7. Queremos dar gracias a todos los trabajadores que pusieron todo su esfuerzo atrás de esta emergencia. Nuestros trabajadores están reportando, reportando día y noche, cada día. Ellos han mostrado un progreso notable en los últimos días. Estamos muy agradecidos por su trabajo. Nuestro objetivo continúa. Estamos dedicados a abrir a lo más pronto posible. También quiero dar las gracias a los contratistas, Griffith Company y Security Paving, por todo su excelente trabajo estos días pasados. A nuestros trabajadores de Caltrans, de cada nivel y división de nuestra agencia, estamos orgullosos por su dedicación para este gran trabajo. Esto es un ejemplo de que se, que se puede lograr cuando todos trabajan juntos. Finalmente, quiero, queremos compartir un mensaje importante para nuestros conductores, especialmente los que conducen 
en la ruta alternativa. Por, fa por favor, conduce baja velocidad. Tu, su tu seguridad es nuestra prioridad. También muchas gracias al gobernador y la alcaldesa Vaz por todo su apoyo en esto. Now I will open it up to uh, questions and answers. Thank, thank you. Yeah. No, I, on the arson investigation, it's ongoing, and I'll remind everybody, 1-800-468-4408, if you have any information, can lead uh, to cooperating what we have in the basis of some preliminary uh, information uh, about uh, individual or individuals. So we have no further update, but as we made very crystal clear, as we do, and it's appropriate to share, we'll share, but we're looking still for any support we can from the public, that confidential tip line. I mean, it was, it's, it's an arson investigation, so it was a crime. It was, a, it was an act of malice, but let me go more broadly. Um, as you know well, you've, a lot of you reported it and quite accurately. Uh, Apex, the owner of the lease, there's five additional leases. They have unlawful detainer in all five operations. Uh, we've been inspecting the site. We gave them unlawful, unlawful detainer on September 30th of last year. It was inspected multiple occasions prior to that. That led to the off, unlawful detainer uh, listing, not only for back rent, but also for illegal subleasing. Uh, the reason we have a court uh, date January, early February, is because there was action taken uh, against uh, the lessee. As it relates to the investigation itself, and the conditions led to it, uh, and how this occurred, uh, that's obviously ongoing. Uh, not only the individual or individuals responsible, uh, but more of the details will be refined as the investigation unfolds. How much is this costing, and how many people are actively working on it? So on the cost, that's still being assessed, and it will be on the basis of what we need to do over the course of the next number of days to get this done. So we have no new cost estimates to provide you at this time. Uh, as you know, we're working with the Federal Highway Administration, the $3 million that Mayor Bass just referred to uh, with some emergency money that comes in. Uh, we have a very formalized protocol, Caltrans with the Federal Highway Administration in terms of costs, a reimbursement schedule before that works about 100% reimbursement after about 91.57, not about specifically uh, after uh, the project is reopened. But all those costs are being assessed in real time. This is a cost plus material plus 21% contingency contract on the basis of these pre-approved contracts with the two contractors. All that information will be making uh, public as time unfolds, but no direct cost estimate at this time. We have about 250 people, and uh, I would expect that number to go up, not down. It certainly went up last night. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that's been so impressive is the way people came to the work site. In other words, the work site didn't have that many people, but additional staff came because they understood the significance of getting this finished as quick as possible. Sure. Uh, LA Fire is looking at the freeway underpasses uh, around the city. But let me just say that uh, LA City wants to make sure our house is in order. So we have a number of leases under the freeway as well. So we are looking at those to make sure that what we're doing is appropriate as well. And just if I could just add on that, in partnership with the mayor's office, working with the state fire marshal, uh, we are reviewing, as I noted three or four days ago, we already initiated an investigation uh, with our state mayor of high uh, prone areas or high areas of concern. That is ongoing, and the latest on that is by, well, hopefully, in fact, I can say this, I didn't even consider the date. Um, let's get this thing open, and then shortly thereafter, somewhere in the middle of next week, we'll have an update on the preliminary findings on the basis of our investigation in partnership with the city as well on all these sites. Timing should be about the same. More questions? Thank you. Thank you. Have good news. Thank you. It's a good, good. day in LA.